that, I invite uh, none other than Dr. Chaitanya Shembekar to give his uh, keynote address on fertility preservation and transgenders. Respected chairpersons uh, and my dear friends, uh, uh, the theme of this uh, conference is fertility preservation uh, is uh, for infertility present and future. And so I am talking about the future and that is fertility preservation in transgenders. I bring greetings from uh, Maharashtra ISAR, NOGS, AMOGS and Omega Hospital along with my team of directors Manisha, Parul, Ashish and Kalpana. Uh, transgender is an adjective connected with people who feel that they are the wrong sex and who express this in the way they dress, live, behave sexually etc. The number is 4.8 million in Indians, 0.7% in US and the number is increasing day by day. So you must understand the process of transgenders. Uh, transgender is all about gender identity. What you feel within and this may start in at 3 to 4 years of age of life and what is sexual identity is the identity given to a particular person at birth. And what is gender dysphoria? It is the mental state of confusion and internal conflict. And how is the transgender identity different from sexual orientation? Transgender may or may not be homosexual. So homosexuals are different and transgenders may not be homosexuals. And the gender role is the role which is played by a gender in the society. And cisgenders are those who are not transgenders. So whenever I think about homosexuals, this song of yesterday's comes in my mind. So, as a uh, healthcare workers or as a doctor, you must discuss about fertility preservation whenever anyone comes to you, desires to become a transgender. And friends, three people came to me last year desiring that we want to change the sex and we don't feel from within that we are whatever we are. So this is what is happening and more and more people are coming nowadays. So whenever people come to you, the first step is you must talk about fertility preservation and this should be before the step number one in the transition of transgenders and that is G-A-H-T or gender affirming hormonal treatment. So before giving this treatment, you must talk about the fertility preservation. And then comes the step number two and that is sex reassignment surgery. And once the sex reassignment surgery is done, then that is the end of the road and you cannot offer them fertility preservation. And therefore you must talk to them as soon as they wish about the, the change in the sex. The transgenders, adolescents and, and young adults are the most important group because they are those who, are, who want to change and here you can actually give them the option of fertility preservation and you must know that FTM means transgender men and MTF means transgender females. Uh, so, as I told you, all the organizations have said and they have recommended that all the transgender individuals must receive counseling prior to transitioning about the possible ne negative impacts of the treatment and also they should be given option of fertility preservation. Now, this awareness is not there in the society, but we have a very good awareness as far as oncology is concerned. So, everybody in oncology is talking about fertility preservation and it is now well established. We all know that before starting chemotherapy, we must refer the patient to a fertility specialist for the freezing of sperms and cryo freezing of oocytes. But then in India, the things are changing and in September 2022, Ayushman Bharat scheme has launched where insurance is given to these transgenders. But the problem is they have a reproductive desire, but the, the procedure use of this procedure is very low. And the bottom line is that you should not miss this opportunity. You must miss this, uh, give this opportunity to the patients who wish to change their sex. Now, I will take you to the case discussions. These discussions are important because they will give you idea how the things are changing. These are the publications. There is something called as Gender and Sex Development Program. And this is the program where counseling is done. Now, I will tell you a story of Ryans. Ryans is a trans male. He realized this at the age of 13. And the counselling was done at the age of 16. 
her parents and the girlfriend was aware of this and they gave full support to him at the age of 18 who said freezing was done by ovum pickup and at the age of 20 ryan is doing well with testosterone therapy that means the change of sex is done at the age of 20 there is a story of peter peter has a similar story he is a european american he is birth assigned female but now a transgender male he presented to the counseling center and everything was told to him but after understanding the process of ovum pickup anesthesia and everything he realized that this is not my cup of tea i don't want to go for this though i am interested in children having kids is not my cup of tea so he rejected this idea and he said i will not go for fertility preservation so this is how the people may think what they wish to do in future and this is a very important study in human reproduction where everything is told about the fertility preservation in transgenders and you will find that almost all the studies are after 2017 or 2015 so these are the latest studies and all these studies they have discussed the psychological aspects and most of them they are on the on the adolescents and young adults so the mantra is catch them young because that is the most important age adolescence is the age where you should catch them and tell them about fertility preservation now what you should know about what transgenders feel from inside they we found that 40, it was noticed that 47% they wish to have genetic child but only discussion was done in 12% of cases and only 3% of them they agreed to undergo fertility preservation that means they are not very much ready or eager for that because of many factors like financial issues laws social climate attitudes and awareness amongst the healthcare providers so there are many laws and all the countries have their own laws and we have our own art law but apart from laws the state of mind is important what they feel from within and whether they really wish to go for that is also important now we will start with the transgender female transgender females are actually interested in sex change and before that you can give them a very simple option of collecting semen sample by masturbation but most of them they are not ready for that because from inside within they don't feel that they are men and therefore they feel that they don't feel like giving sample by masturbation so you can go for electro ejaculation or you may go for sperm retrieval by tesa or pesa which gives good results and the testicular tissue cryopreservation preservation is something which is the future and it is still experimental uh, now the semen freezing is done once the freezing is done next step is the medical treatment and in medical treatment you give testosterone lowering agents like gnrh agonist spironolactone ciproterone acetate or estradiols all these things they lead to the testicular atrophy and once the testicular atrophy is complete it becomes irreversible and then you cannot actually retrieve the sperms and lastly you can give them the option of sex reassignment surgery but once that surgery is done it is the end of the road therefore proper counseling should be done before giving this option of sex reassignment surgery so catch them young is the mantra and you can start with sperm uh, masturbation collection of semen by masturbation or electro ejaculation or vibrators or maybe pesa and tesa uh, if the patient comes to you at a very young age say before 10 years of age then there is a problem but there are studies which have stated that at the age of 11 years they could retrieve the sperm or in a semen sample also some people have found sperm in urine sample and therefore you can get the sperm even at at the young age of 11 years but what before that before that if you want to go for the fertility preservation you can do, go for testicular tissue cryopreservation preservation or you can go for spermatogonium stem cell cryopreservation preservation which is the future and testicular tissue cryopreservation is a good option and spermatogonium stem cell cryopreservation is also a good option but it is experimental once you retrieve the sperms you can use them for iui which is not a good option because the success rate of iui is only 15 to 20% or maybe less than that icsi is a better option some people may go for donor program or some people may go for surrogacy but the problems are there is a it's like a hurdle race first thing most of them they are not aware of this fertility preservation second thing psychologically there is a challenge they don't feel that i don't think i am a man that is the problem with them then financial burden of change of sex and other things 
and last is the what the parents and the doctors they feel and they should support them for all this process entire process but still fertility preservation is easy in trans females because you are actually freezing the sperms but it is difficult in transgender men because here you have to do oocyte retrieval which is a invasive procedure so you can actually so what how you can go for fertility preservation transgender females um, uh, transgender male in transgender men you can actually go for either oocyte cryopreservation or you may go for embryo cryopreservation or you may go for in vitro maturation or maybe ovarian tissue cryopreservation um once the pickup is done then next step is the medical treatment and here testosterone is given to such patients and once you give testosterone the ovaries they become atrophic endometrium becomes atrophic and the menses stop here within 6 months you may go for fertility preservation by stopping testosterone but after 6 months of testosterone maybe you may not be able to retrieve the eggs in such patients and then the option for for fertility preservation is of course oocyte freezing or embryo freezing but it is said that oocyte freezing is the best option because you get autonomy over your own eggs or over your own oocytes because they are not fertilized with the semen sample uh, ovarian tissue cryopreservation is again one more thing which is actually still experimental in transgenders but it is very commonly done in uh, the onco patients or the malignancy patients here the biggest advantage is that you can do this ovarian tissue cryopreservation whenever you are doing sex reassignment surgery during this process you can take out the tissue ovarian tissue and cryopreserve it and may use it in future but the problem is the patients are not ready for reimplantation in future because once they change the sex it becomes difficult for them psychologically to again go for reimplantation that is a problem and this is something which is tried and tested in cancer patients um in vitro maturation in vitro activation are all again experimental and finally you can actually think of artificial gametes as a future for transgenders and this artificial gametes can be prepared from somatic cells and there are various studies which have said that in 2016 there is a there was a group of a, uh, a scientists who successfully in vitro created functional male gametes later in the same year in november a group of scientists created a uh, oocytes from the skin cell in mouse model and recently there is a report from cambridge university where it is possible to create mouse embryos in a 3d culture system so all this is experimental and on 3rd of august my birthday last year there was a news in the guardian which created sensation and this news said that you can actually create a synthetic embryo and a first synthetic embryo with beating heart was created on 3rd of august last year and that is the news which created sensation but sapno sapno ki duniya se hum log abhi vastav mein aate hain and as on today the ground reality is different very few people are going for fertility preservation this study says that out of 100 people five patients offered fertility preservation only 13 Uh, uh opted for fertility preservation and out of 13 most of them they were transgender females and very few were transgender men because uh, uh retrieval of oocyte is something which is invasive and therefore difficult uh, so there are so many studies which say that a low rate is the problem with this fertility preservation and lack of awareness is something which is again a problem um our duty as a healthcare provider as a doctor we should have knowledge about the transgenders we should know more about the fertility preservation and we should discuss this with trans transgenders in the society we should also know the language and vocabulary of the transgenders because it is constantly changing so you should stay updated with the latest vocabulary and have respectful communication with these transgenders and you should be patient friendly you should use correct names correct gender and you should be more sensitive towards these transgenders if they come to you for the consultation this was the news in times of india which where the madras high court has said that you should have a glossary of terms and you should have proper terms to identify this lgbt community because we 
न्यू ओनली एल जी बी टी बट नाउ इट इज एल जी बी टी क्यू आई ए प्लस 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 सो दट टर्मिनोलॉजी इज चेंजिंग कॉन्स्टेंटली सो यू शुड नो द प्रॉपर टर्मिनोलॉजी एंड दैट इज द नीड ऑफ आर एंड ऑल्सो दिस इज द ओनली स्टडी विच से दैट पेरेंट्स प्ले अ वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट रोल एंड पेरेंट्स शुड बी सपोर्ट यू इफ समबडी विशेस टू गो फॉर द सेक्स चेंज वी ऑल नो दैट देर इज समथिंग कॉल्ड एज कम्युनिटी कॉल्ड एज हिजरा इन इंडिया and these hijras are different from transgenders though hijras are actually transgenders they are different because they are stigmatized and there is now a smile portal by government of india where this they are actually giving certificates and id cards to transgenders scholarships to transgenders skill training medical insurance and shelter homes and fertility preservation will soon follow and government of india may offer fertility preservation to these transgenders and as i told you there was a photo session and a moment where the professionals the people who are not hijras they try to convince this to the society that we are transgenders but we are not hijras this is a the moment and here you can see a doctor displaying a placard saying i am a transgender and i am a surgeon i am not a hijra so this is something the movement which is now happening in india that people want to tell the society that they are transgenders but they are not hijras and some good news for transgenders in india this is the news which says that ayushman bharat has covered transgenders in the insurance packages and then came the art act and surrogacy act and the things have totally changed now you can go for oocyte freezing you can go for semen freezing but what about the future of transgenders will they marry and what about surrogacy everything is at present gloomy we just don't know what is happening in future but jate jate i will just give you a, a, a imaginary situation and that will give you idea about the zest of whatever i have discussed till now imagine a transgender man his oocytes were frozen and then sex reassignment surgery was done then there is a transgender female whose sperms were frozen and then sex reassignment surgery was done they meet each other they marry each other and then with the oocytes of transgender male and the sperms of transgender female through surrogacy they deliver a baby and they live happily ever after so this is something which may happen so take home message is friends first try to understand the complex situation of transgenders and then the fertility preservation in transgenders transgender population is slowly rising fertility preservation option must be discussed with all the transgenders earlier the decision better is the outcome so jaldi karo approach of doctors and parents play an important role so our role is also important and with new art bill and art act it would be interesting to see the future situation in india aage aage dekho hota hai kya thank you very much thank you thank you chaitanya that was excellent uh, especially when we talk about transgenders or also the lgbtq community we need to understand besides uh, understanding the community their rights also their rights uh, uh, towards fertility is also an essential component um what uh in fact uh, we do have opportunities to treat them over here where where they're not there in the other countries where they are even denied hormonal treatment before so all this looks like a futuristic what you've talked about because i think it's a continuation of what we had earlier also uh, but these are the right steps uh, hopefully the law will also be favorable the art law will be favorable when we talk about them Thank you so much Chaitanya